All right, let's move on to our next topic, which is attaching and constructing graphics or constructing and attracting graphics, whichever you prefer. Because up until now, we haven't actually done anything. We haven't drawn anything that we can present in our final drawing. All we've done is, is learned how to create the underlying foundation and the intelligence behind the design, but we haven't actually given the design anything to present on print or on digital format, whatever way you send your drawings out. So let's look at exactly how we do that. Let's take a very simple example. I'm going to take a line again, give it a constraint to make it a construction, add some points, constrain them as point on, fix the first, and put a dimension to the second. Let's give that a variable name. And give it a value as well. Let's assign it. I know this all looks um, very repetitive, but when you're getting into dimension driven design, especially if you're, if you're new to it, it can feel a bit counterintuitive. It can feel quite counterintuitive about many of the things, so it's good to get the repetition in and to, to get an idea of the workflow of how to do things. So what we want to do now, if I toggle off constructions with the F8 key, which is the same as turning on off constructions in the view attributes, you can see there's nothing really there to present except for a dimension and this thing which would only confuse people. So let's immediately change that to a construction as well and hide that. Let's toggle back on our constructions. And what we want to do now is attach a graphic to these geometric constraints. We need to pull out this toolbar up here, attach element, and the first icon here is called attach line stringer shape. So we're going to attach a simple line in between these two geometric constraints. And note that the attachments go to the constraints and not to the points or anything like that. So let's select the constraint and you'll notice that the line has snapped to the correct position on the line and hover over this constraint and watch it snap again and has gone to the correct position so now I can reset to place the line. If I toggle constructions off there you can see this is our graphic that we fi present in our final design for printing or for other means of distribution. So that's the, the process, and that's the general summary of our DDD workflow. One is create constructions, two is define relationships, with constraints, either dimensional, geometric, or algebraic. And three, we attach our presentation graphics. And just on the point there of presentation graphics, I'm just going to change that text a bit there to general DDD workflow. On the, on the point of presentation graphics, one thing I like to do as well is I don't even like to use my dimension, my driving dimensions, my constraint dimensions as presentation graphics. I like to leave them in the construction class as well and do another separate dimension which would be two company standards and and 
add a byte association instead. So they will be separate entities, even though they look and appear the same, they will be separate entities. And you can have them on a separate layer, so you don't have to look at them when you're actually working on your DDD design. So let's look at a few of the other ways of attaching elements. If we hover over this line here, we can see, while I've only drawn a, a single line segment here, it can be a line string or shape. If you start and finish at the same geometric constraint, it will automatically close it into a shape. Let's look at the next one, which is attach arc. For an arc, we need a radius and a start and a finish point. So let's constrain that. Better toggle back on my constructions. Add some points. Constrain them onto the arc or onto the circle. And now I want to attach an arc. Let's give this a, a thickness this time and a different color. So the first prompt here is to identify ellipse. So we identify the circle and then we identify endpoint. Um, both points are endpoints according to this prompt here, so there's no start or end, both points are endpoints. So let's identify that endpoint and identify that one, and the arc is drawn for us. And just to be on the safe side, let's just show that that arc does move around, as does the line. They both move around and remain attached to our constructions. Now while I placed that arc, there was something I didn't mention. <coughs> the arcs must always be selected in an anti-clockwise fashion. If I was to try and attach that and select this geometric constraint first, I wouldn't be able to go down and select this one next, because I'd have to go all the way around. It always goes anti-clockwise, so start with your most clockwise constraint when placing arcs. 